Tonight you're witnessing the results of a dream that's taken a long time to achieve. I want to give you a glimpse of the history of the formation of that dream and then share what that dream can achieve. It was the year 2000 and I was in Tokyo at a cocktail party after giving a talk at ATR, uh, Advanced Telecommunications Research International. I went over the, to the director of ATR and said, who in Japan is using this new brain imaging technology called magnetoencephalography, or MEG? He looked around the room and he pointed out a man across the way and said, it's Dr. Toshiaki Imada. He's the pioneer in Japan. So I went over there and stood in front of Toshi and said, Dr. Imada, there's a group of people, researchers in Seattle, who are very interested in putting babies in an MEG machine. We want to see what happens to their brains as they think, as they feel, and as they learn. What do you think? Is it possible? And I remember seeing his eyebrows go higher and higher and higher. And he said, pausing, it will be very, very difficult. But I could see there was a glint of excitement in his eyes and a little bit of surprise, and he hadn't said it was impossible. So I smiled at him and said, how would you like to come to Seattle and help us do that? And he immediately said yes. And that began the multi-year path uh, towards tonight's opening of the MEG Brain Imaging Center here at iLabs and the launch of what we're calling the Developing Mind Project. Well, let's start by describing what is the Developing Mind Project. Our goal is to understand a mind in the making. The Developing Mind Project will identify windows of opportunity in development when the blueprint for, for brain development opens to experiences of a particular kind, experience that's necessary to learn a language, to form attachments to others, to think mathematically, to develop a self-concept, to read, or to do abstract thinking. The Developing Mind Project will identify the critical windows of opportunity for learning and the triggers that initiate, that impede, or that enhance learning at various times in development. Imagine being able to identify the mechanisms underlying children's exuberant learning and what happens when that learning doesn't transpire. Uh, what goes wrong? in the brain when that kind of learning doesn't transpire. Imagine being able to discover the biomarkers that identify very early in a child's life developmental disabilities such as autism or epilepsy so that effective interventions can be started when the brain is still plastic and very amenable to change. The Developing Mind Project seeks to do all of this. So how, how are we going to get there? Today's ribbon cutting for the iLabs Brain Imaging Center is a very critical first step. Understanding the developing brain and what's really going on up there is vital. And MEG allows us to literally see a brain's activity in real time. Imagine being able to do that in a child doing something, have, doing an activity. To see a successful or struggling child's brain that's trying to do a math problem or struggling to read or a child's brain when she sees her mother or experiences fear or anger. The Meg machine allows us to do this. Meg represents a giant scientific advance. It's akin to the leap from a still photograph, a, sh a snapshot like fMRI provides of the brain, to a moving video in live color. You're seeing the dynamic changes in a brain uh, over time. And we can do very complex analyses that allow us to see what we call brain oscillations or brain rhythms that signal attention, that signal learning, and that signal memory. The iLabs teams worked with engineers at Electa for about six years to solve the daunting engineering problems presented by testing infants and young children. During these early years, 2002-2003, Bruce and Jolene McCaw provided very generous support and we are so thankful to them for doing that. We sent UW graduate students, yes, thank you. They cannot be here tonight. We sent UW graduate students to Taipei, to Tokyo, to Helsinki with Dr. Amata to collect data to test what MEG would allow us to do. And you'll see some of their work tonight. By 2007, we'd laid the groundwork, but we still didn't have a MEG machine here in Seattle. 
To get one required a bold decision by a governor. Governor Christine Gregoire decided to invest in the future of the life sciences in the state of Washington. She established the Life Sciences Discovery Fund, which awarded grants in a statewide competition to research groups who advance the health and welfare of Washington's citizens. LSDF awarded iLabs a $4 million grant to support our MEG facility. Thank you, Governor Gregoire, and thank you, Executive Director of LSDF, Lee Huntsman. But it took more than that. To make our LSD live, we had to show community involvement and involvement. Visionaries Nick and Leslie Hanauer were generous contributors to the MEG facility, and their gift encouraged others in the community to give. We're deeply grateful to Nick and Leslie, and you'll see tonight that the magnetically shielded room housing the MEG machine bears their name. Thank you so much, the two of them. <laughs> And then we needed to build this wonderful facility, and that required help from the University of Washington, and they stepped up, as they have so many times in the past, and Andy's going to talk about that in a bit. So with a $7 million center complete, this MEG facility, we, we wanted to put the second major strategy in place, and that was to hire new faculty who will work with us to achieve the goals of the Developing Mind Project. Three new young faculty will begin at iLabs this fall. Chantal Pratt, Andrea Stucco, both from Carnegie Mellon University, and KC Lee from Harvard University. Two of them are here tonight, and I want them to raise their hands. There they are. Chantel focuses on cortical dynamics and the coordination of brain activities, particularly interested in individual differences when coping with difficult tasks. KC Lee is interested in the brain's activity to control attention, a skill that develops in childhood, is maximized, our teenagers think, when they multitask, and declines very precipitously in aging. He's also interested in brain-computer interfaces. These three faculty create new synergies with the existing iLabs team that will help us realize our long-term goals as specified by the Developing Mind Project. We're so glad to have them on board. What we do here at iLabs in the next few years will transform what we know about brains and about learning over the lifespan. It will transform how we educate our children.